What I would like to start with is an anecdote that I think really speaks to the power of participation and what it can do. Uh, pictured on the slide here is a photo of a farm in the area here called uh, Gardens of Egan. And it's an organic farm, probably a lot of you are familiar with it, and it's owned by the Wedge Co-op, but for decades it was owned and farmed by Martin and Atina Diffley. And if you don't know Martin and Atina Diffley, they are one of the pioneers of organic agriculture, not only here in Minnesota, but in the United States as a whole. And in 2006, their farm, Gardens of Egan, was threatened with a crude oil pipeline. And uh, I had received a call from Atina Diffley one day saying, hey Pat, uh, we could really use your help. I was editor of the newspaper, The Mix, the Twin Cities Natural Food Co-ops newspaper, to help get the word out about this uh, proposed pipeline. And she had also contacted all of the food co-ops in, in the area as well. So as we all work together to um, uh, put a stop to this uh, pipeline, uh, food co-op members mobilized. Like, I have never seen food co-op members mobilized before. Um, the Minnesota Utilities Commission and the Minnesota Department of Agriculture were completely overwhelmed by people's response to protecting this farm and rejecting the oil pipeline. They got over 4,500 public comments. So to make a somewhat long story short, the effort to uh, stop the pipeline was successful. Not only was it successful, um, but it even went a step further in that uh, there are legal protections for organic farms in the state of Minnesota now regarding oil pipelines. And not only in the state of Minnesota, but in many jurisdictions around the United States. So this decision had a very far-reaching impact. Um, during the course of the uh, pipeline crisis, uh, Actually, uh, Atina Diffley wrote a memoir called Turn Here, Sweet Corn, which I highly recommend. And uh, in, I, I took a quote from the book, and this is Martin Diffley speaking to Atina about this. And um, he said about uh, the wealthy oil interests and the Koch brothers, <laughs> um, they have deep pockets, but you have the food co-op community. So I knew then that I belonged to a very powerful community. Um, people were so passionate about defending this farm. And I think the reason why is that they felt a sense of ownership and belonging. I mean, they didn't actually own it, but they felt a deep connection they had eaten the food from the farm. They knew the benefits of organic eating on their table. Maybe they hadn't met Atina or Martin, but they felt like they knew them. So the uh, connection that they felt was so strong. And I think it's a really wonderful example of what participation can do, uh, not only within our co-ops, but expanding out into the world. Um, so uh, as I was thinking about these things, I found a quote by a woman named Margaret Wheatley, and she's written a number of books about uh, creating community. And this is what she had to say. Belonging together is defined by a shared sense of purpose. Staying on the work together is what transforms the tension of belonging and individuality 
into energetic and resilient communities. A vibrant community is possible when we see what we share. Clearly with the Gardens of Egan and how our food co-op members felt about that farm really demonstrates people could see what they shared and knew what was at stake. So when I think about uh, the concept of belonging, of course, you always turn to the dictionary and these things. And you know, possession and ownership is certainly part of it. But one of the things that resonated with me was to be naturally associated with something or a close and secure relationship. So I think belonging is all about connection. And given the example of Gardens of Vegan, you, sa you could say, well, Pat, you know, that's, um, that's you know, people in service to their co-op, which it is, for sure. But I think that in order to generate that level of passion and service, I really think that cultivating that sense of belonging is critical to that. And when I think about, you know, the big the big picture concepts, I always like to bring them down to what I think are their most elemental. So when I think about this kind of thing, I think about the concept of friendship. When we make friends, how do we do it? We ask them questions, we invite them to do things with us, we want to find out more about them, maybe we find people who share the same interests that we do. Um, and uh, you know, we have our strategic reasons for making friends as well. We want companionship or we want to gain support or some kind of assistance. We uh, want to meet with like-minded people. So when I think about this in context for our co-ops, I think, okay, regarding participation, how can we be better friends to the environment? How can we be better friends to our communities? How can we be better friends to our local economy? How can we extend this sense of friendship in order to create that powerful sense of belonging in our communities? And I think today the, the big question that we're all discussing, I think there's other questions embedded in that as well. And that is, um, what is the relationship that we have to uh, the people who are already in our communities? How can we strengthen that relationship or make it better? And then how can we extend these relationships? A lot of times people ask me, hey Pat, how do we you know, get more people to join the co-op or how do we get more people to be involved? And my response is always the same. I think the first and best thing that we can do is ask. So when we think about this call to participation and how do we make that come alive in our co-ops, I think the answer is to issue an invitation. <laughs> 